Good morning, Manitoba. I am Larry McIntosh, and I'll be your host for the next hour and every Saturday morning from 8 to 9. My guest this morning is Sam Cates, the mayor of Winnipeg. Good morning, Sam. Well, good morning to you. And how are you today? Excellent. So, exciting 10 years. Uh, has it been 10 years you've been in office? It's been over 10 years. Over 10 years. 10 years and three months, but we're not counting. But you know what? It's been extremely gratifying, no question about it. Now, going back 10 years, three months, and, and change, when you decided to run and put your name in the race, did you think you were going to be in the office for 10 years? Was that your original plan? or I never thought I was ever going to run. Forget about <laughs> that. So was I going to be there for 10 years? No, I, I, didn't, I didn't think that. You know, maybe two elections, okay? But things change, as you know. Life, you never know what the path is going to be. So this is the way mine turned out. Never say never, right? Exactly. So, th- th- 10 years, there's amazing things have happened in the city, and I'm sure you have lots of accomplishments, but it had to be a, a large decision for you not to decide to put your name in the race again. It was a large decision, but it was actually a decision that was made almost four years ago. When I decided to run last time, and I was talking to my wife, Leah, you know, I told her this would be my last term. And I, I, I meant it, <laughs> but I knew there might be some, <laughs> a little wiggle room. But to be very frank, you know, then came, you know, we've got, we had two young girls, then we have, now we got a 22-month-old son, and um, you know what, there's nothing more important to me than, than family. That's always been the number one priority. I know both my parents, as landed immigrants, came here with my brother and I, and the priority was the children, and, and, and that's kind of the way I am as well. And I, you know, I, I'd be at City Hall for a full week, and I realized there wasn't one night I got home until 10 o'clock, and I'm saying, you know, this isn't good, I don't want this. I want to be with 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 my my son and my daughters and uh, so I kind of knew it was the end and and it was 100 percent official in March we already knew a date when we were going to make the announcement. And you talked about your parents and I know you talk about them a lot and they wanted to make the community a better place. Is that partly why you decided to go for political leadership back in the, ten years ago? <clears throat> you know what? You're, you're you're partly there. My, my, you know, my parents came here Holocaust survivors after the war. They had nothing. And, you know, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada gave them the opportunity to start over, raise their two children, gave myself and my brother a wonderful life. And it certainly is a great way to give back to your community. I mean, I'm not convinced people really know the sacrifices someone running for public office makes, which is why, one, I try to encourage as many people. And number two, thank anybody who puts their name on a ballot, no matter what you're running for. And, and I couldn't agree with you more. And I've said this on the show many times. And what, you know, whether it's municipal politics or federal or provincial or what, whatever parties, anybody that puts their name on a ballot is making a, a huge commitment. And I think everybody gets into politics for the right reasons. Um, and and it, it, it is a stress on your family life. It's not a eight to five job by any stretch. And I totally respect people like yourself that have put yourself out there to do this. Well, let me tell you, it's definitely not an eight to five job and probably at the municipal level would be the most difficult and challenging because the citizens are expecting you available all the time and they actually think you're responsible for everything. I mean, someone goes to the hospital and their mother's there in the hallway, they call City Hall. Their check hasn't come in the mail from welfare, they call City Hall. People have this impression that City Hall does everything. They really don't know the difference of responsibilities between the city, the province, and the federal government. So the mayor and council get all sorts of calls. But you know what? I enjoy dealing with people, and, you know, I enjoy getting things done and making Winnipeg a better place to live, to work, to play. That's what it's all about. I want my kids to grow up here and have a wonderful future as well. And I, and I think municipal politics is interesting, or the way it works from my perspective. Uh, you have party systems in the federal and provincial, right? So you can get the votes together to accomplish things. Here, you're, you're one vote on council, right? That's correct. So you have to convince others if you want to go a path, or or they have to convince you if they want to go a path. It's it's really one vote for you. Yeah, I mean, the reality is the mayor has one vote, and I've said uh, hundreds of times, is council is supreme. Okay, nine votes, get something done on the floor of council. Otherwise, it doesn't happen, which means you need a mayor who can build consensus. And I think over 10 years, uh, we've had phenomenal success doing that, and I'm very, very proud of that. Very proud of that. And you should be, because, I mean, that is something that anybody can be adversarial. Anybody can say the opposite of what somebody else says to get some media coverage. But to get to pull a team together and accomplish things. And, you know, have we accomplished everything that you wanted to in the last 10 years? I'm sure that's not the case. I would ask you to answer that. But look at the things that have been accomplished in our city. 
Well, you know, it's it's rather interesting because you've seen the games that can be played, and believe me, there's lots of games, and we won't get into that right now. But the realities are when you do have, you know, counselors pulling the right direction, uh, it's pretty amazing what we can get done, and 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 we've done some phenomenal things. And I say we, it's the mayor and council. I mean, we have totally changed our our recreation infrastructure. When I was elected, community centers, um, skating rinks, swimming pools, um, libraries were falling apart. They were basically mm -hmm. condemned. We've invested hundreds of millions of dollars. We've either been renovating or rebuilding. And that to me is extremely important, especially recreation facilities, because that's where the families and that's where the children go. And we've done so much of that. And no matter what part of the city you go into, you will see so many significant changes. It can even be the boring stuff that everybody talks about, the roads and the bridges. And we actually came up with a plan on how to do that, because if you neglect something for a long, long time, guess what? It's going to be in a state of disrepair. And we're there and we got a plan. And when Shelly and I were driving here this morning, we actually thought we were going to be late because there's so much construction everywhere. You're thinking, oh, all this construction. And then you stop to think, all this construction. These roads are being improved. Uh, just about every road in this area is being under construction right now. But we're moving forward and we're improving things after many years of not doing that, right? You know what? It's You're, you're so right. But I love to see cranes. I mean, they used to be extinct right now. We're seeing cranes all over the city. And it's great to see in our downtown, not only building condos, they're building apartments, high-rise apartments. That hasn't happened in three decades now. People believe and are investing in our city and in our downtown. And that, to me, is what the mayor and council's job is all about. We'll be right back with Mayor Sam Cates after we take this break. Welcome back to Food and Friends. My guest this morning is Sam Cates, the mayor of Winnipeg. So, 10 years, 3 months and change. What are some of your biggest accomplishments that you think you've accomplished along with council and others? Well, I think we've been rebuilding our city. Okay, I, I've mentioned the, the recreational side, et cetera. But along with that, the roads, I'm so happy about the roads, the sidewalks, the back lanes. In addition to that, infrastructure such as fire halls and police stations, these are things, libraries, et cetera. These are things that are extremely important. And I, I'll never forget the line when someone said to me that this fire hall was built for horses, not for fire trucks. That just tells you what happens when you have a fire hall that's 100 years old. So I'm very happy to see that stuff getting done, and I certainly hope it will continue. We need to continue. We need to take our older buildings and rejuvenate them and give them, and I think everybody realizes they want to give our emergency responders all the tools required to do their job to the best of their ability to make sure they're protecting our citizens and that they're protected as well. And I think back over the last 10 years, and I've, I've lived here since 1984, left for a few years and my old job, came back. And I can't remember a time when our city has been more alive, whether that's downtown, whether that's the Ikea opening or whether that the ballpark going back a ways or investors group field. It goes on and on and on. What's happened in the last 10 years, I've, I've never seen in this city. Let me, let, me share, let me share something with you. When I was first elected, there were two questions I would get asked over and over and over again. And they'd, they'd phrase it like this. When are you, Mr. Mayor, bringing back an NHL franchise? It's not like the mayor is going to do that. And when are you bringing an Ikea to Winnipeg? Really? I am proud to say that they're both here and that civic government played a role in both of them. Okay? By the same token, it certainly took the private sector. But here's the difference now. I get calls at City Hall from investors in China, in Germany, wanting to invest in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. That never happened before. You know, about two years ago, we were voted the best place in Canada to invest in. Winnipeg is, they're taking notice of Winnipeg, period. And that to me is extremely important. And that's what you want. It's exactly what you want. And I'm, I'm really proud of everybody played a role in that. There's no one individual that does that. It takes many, many people, many groups all pulling in the same direction. We had Stuart Murray from the Canadian Museum for Human Rights on last weekend, last Saturday, and he was talking about that. And I, and I was telling him, people are talking about Winnipeg more than I've ever seen. We travel, Shelley and I travel throughout the States to visit customers, and they're all happy when we get the Jets back. Even non-hockey fans in the States are, hey, getting the Jets back, that's great. 
But the Human Rights Museum has had an amazing amount of people talking about they want to come here and see it. They want to bring conventions here. It, it's kind of putting another thing that's going, putting us on the map. You know, I mean, I, I was there for the Museum for, for Human Rights, and I'll tell you something, and I think you mentioned before. No matter what you do, there will be those who will criticize. End of story, it's going to happen. And I remember on the floor of council, we took a lot of criticism, you know, uh, from some people for the support that we got through council for the Museum for Human Rights. To me, the smartest, most astute thing we've ever done. We've ever done. I mean, I don't know, forgetting about as mayor, but just as a citizen, how proud I am that the first museum outside of Ottawa was not in Toronto, not in Vancouver, not in Montreal, in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Someone, Israel Asper, had a vision, had a dream, and guess what? it became reality. And we should all be so proud of that. And we all should be proud of that. And the amount of private sector money that's come into that shows you that it's a great idea, that people want to get behind it. And I'm totally amazed by that. And, and, and I've been accused of being a cheerleader for our city and our province. And I'm fine with that. Because I think we have so many wonderful things that are happening here. And is there things that need to be tweaked and fixed? There is in every community in Canada, the United States, and probably around the world. But think of the great things that, that we've been part of You've been part of. Just, just look around, okay? I mean, the new airport, fantastic, okay? A brand new uh, in, investor's field. I mean, that's awesome. The MTS Center, the Museum for Human Rights. It goes on and on, and as far as I'm concerned, this should not end. We want this to continue. And the facts of life are, with private sector investment, you can see phenomenal things. Look at the growth of our city. More housing, more condos, more apartments. These are all positive things, all positive things that are happening. And you know what? Check out our downtown. Our downtown was in disarray. It's changed drastically. And now the private sector is investing in it because they believe it's a good place with opportunity and they see the investment that we've made in it. These are all positive things. And you obviously invest in the city as well. You have a Gold Eyes franchise and you have other businesses that are going on here. You have faith in the city, not uh, obviously your mayor, but you've had faith in the city for a long time. Oh, I, I've had faith in the city as, as, a, as, as someone from the private sector. Sure. I very much believe them. I mean, we used to do, you know, the, the concerts and the trade shows that we've done in, in Winnipeg, the, the outdoor events we've created in, you know, in Gimli Fest. And, you know, the... There's no question the gold eyes is very special to me. The investment made in, you know, building a new facility. You know, you, you, you have to take a chance and you have to believe. And guess what? You know, Winnipeggers and Manitobans have been extremely supportive of everything, whether it's the jets, the bombers, the gold eyes. It goes on and on. I mean, we're so fortunate to be living here. And you know better than I do what a giving, giving city and province this is. Our greatest asset, our people. You're absolutely right. We're talking to Mayor Sam Cates, and we'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to Food and Friends. It's time for a recipe segment called Now We're Cooking. Now, you don't need to write this recipe down, as it's today's recipe of the day at peakmarket.com and in the Winnipeg Sun. So all the information is either on our website or the Winnipeg Sun today. Today's recipe is sweet turnip salad. Sweet turnip salad. And here's what you need for the recipe. Two cups of turnips, shredded, two chopped green onions, one tablespoon of sugar, and a pinch of salt, two tablespoons of creamed horseradish, and two teaspoons of caraway seeds. In a medium bowl, add the shredded turnip, onion, sugar, and salt. Mix them well. Add the horseradish and caraway seeds and gently toss. And this uh, should be served as soon as it's ready. And this recipe serves four. Again, this recipe, sweet turnip salad, is today's recipe of the day at peakmarket.com and in the Winnipeg Sun. And Peak of the Market also has a new recipe app. It's available free through the Apple, Android, or BlackBerry app stores, and it's good for any of those phones or your iPad. And all you have to do is go to any of these sites and do a search for Peak Recipes. The Peak Recipe app has over 4,000 recipes at your fingertips with many cool features such as, uh, well, for me, it's good. We can increase the size of the font on the app, which is good. You can search by vegetable, by meal, by type. Uh, You can make a favorites list. You can make a shopping list out of it. Lots of cool recipes, and everything is absolutely free. And... For every person that downloads the free recipes, uh, Peak Recipes app by October 31st, 
Peak of the Market growers will donate 20 pounds of fresh vegetables, up to 1 million pounds, to the Winnipeg Food Bank. So just download our free recipe app, and 20 pounds will go to Winnipeg Harvest to help out those less fortunate. We'll be right back with Sam Cates, the Mayor of Winnipeg, after we take this break for your 680 CWB News, Sports and Weather Update. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Food and Friends. My guest this morning is Sam Cates, the Mayor of Winnipeg. So we were talking in the last half hour about some of the great things that are happening in our city. So what do you see happening in the next five years? Uh, what's your vision of the city? Well, I, I want to see the, the, the city to continue to grow. I want to see opportunity created. Uh, I want to see Centreport become everything it can be and, and create quality jobs and take advantage of the fact that we are located in, you know, right in the middle of, of North America. To me, that's something we should be taking advantage of. And, you know, I want to see the city grow up. And what I mean by that is see more density. That doesn't mean not creating new suburbs because I do believe that people should have the right to choose where they want to live and everybody has a different opinion and sometimes it depends on your age and where you work and so on and so sure. forth mm -hmm. you know I believe in in, in in exercising that freedom but and I want to see I want to see Winnipeggers and Manitobans have what every other city has that's what I want to see we should not be we should not be sold short in any category I think we deserve that because I'll tell you what really turns me on when I'm out having dinner with friends and they tell me how their, their kids moved away, Sam, they're coming back. I'm hearing more and more and more of that. And that really makes me and should make everybody feel good. They're coming back. Absolutely. And, and it's not unusual for kids to want to go up to a Calgary or Toronto and further their career or go to school or whatever it may be. But the fact that they look at Winnipeg as having opportunities, coming back to Manitoba, says a volume. Says volumes, as you say. You have to have opportunity for them to make a good life, and as you know, today a good life may not be enough. Everybody wants more, which I get. But more importantly, you you want to make sure that they can have an exciting life. People are looking for things to do, and if you look in Winnipeg, look at the arts, look at the culture, look at the sport. I mean, we've got it all here. Yes, we have winter. Okay, let's all admit that. Put it on the table. It's there. It's not so bad. I was talking to someone the other day who was talking about our winters, and they're from Rochester, New York. And I happen to know they get winter there, too. <laughs> so, you know, the, the winters, uh, yes, they're chilly here, but I love the sunshine. Uh, it's for me, I can zip up my jacket and I can, you know, warm up the car, but uh, you can't get away from that sunshine. So I, I, I think that Winnipeggers and Manitobas in general are, are a little hard on ourselves. I think we're getting better. But we talk about the negatives of our city. Do you find that? or? Well, you know, I find that people who have left here like to promote what they perceive to be the negative. I also believe that, unfortunately, quite often, the media really hypes the negative And they go on and on. Not in and Food on. and Friends, though, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not in Food and no, Friends. Of course not. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> but, but, you know, so, I mean, you know, it's, it's there. But, you know, there's so much, there's so much more we can talk about. And the realities are... I don't care where you are. There's always something that's negative. You're going to find negatives, you know. And, and I think people have learned, you know, to, to enjoy what we have. I mean, you know, sometimes you don't appreciate what you've got till it's gone. Yep. And I, I think sometimes people who move away appreciate what we have in this province because that's all they ever knew until they moved away and found out there's challenges in a lot of places. I can't tell you how many people I encounter who've moved east or west and say, boy, do I miss this or do I miss that? I really loved Winnipeg, you know, and I'll tell you one of the other things that I'm so proud of. APC, Assiniboine Park Conservancy, what they've done there and the journey to Churchill. I mean, I got to tell you, it was it was, well, several years ago when I came up with this idea and everybody told me I was nuts, which won't be the first time <laughs> or the last time. And then somehow I convinced Hartley Richardson to chair it and I got approved through council and they put together a volunteer board. And I was just there last weekend with my family because we have a, an annual membership, which is great because we can keep on going back over and over mm -hmm. again. And I'll tell you what, it is absolutely awesome. And that never, ever, ever could have happened without, once again, you know, you mentioned the private sector coming to the table on the Museum for Human Rights. They did the exact same thing. 
for Assiniboine Park Conservancy. We couldn't have done it without them. And, and if you look at so many things, the Children's Museum, we had Lisa from the Children's Museum on, on Monday's show. We had a special holiday show. I mean, the Buellers came forward as, along with others to make that happen. And you go after project after project and look at some of the the big names or some of the $20 donations that have gone in to make these projects happen. I, I've lived all over Canada. I've never seen anything quite like what we see here. I think we're very fortunate. You know, there, there are those who have worked hard, very successful, and they are so happy to give and, and, and make Winnipeg a better place. There are those who will give the $20 because it means so much to them. And there are those who may not have any money, they'll give of their time. Right. No matter what, they're giving. And, and, and time is just as valuable as money. But people here want to give, and you can see things that are happening here, and that's what's great. I mean, you know, just uh, a couple of days ago, I came back from St. Mattel Park, built a brand new pavilion and a duck pond. I mean, it's happening everywhere in the city, no matter where you go. This morning, you know, or, or a couple of days ago, I should say, we were at the uh, in St. James where we built a brand new basketball court and a skateboard park. I mean, this is what it's all about. This is what makes our city great, and we have to do it everywhere, and we are. So if you had to look at back over your, your 10 plus years, is there three things that you're the most proud of? Can you narrow it down to three? Is that possible? You know what? I wouldn't even attempt to narrow it down to three, to be very frank with you. And, and you know, I mean, I remember, I think the first year I was elected, they kept on, they always started asking me, so what's your legacy? <laughs> okay. I mean, to me, it's important to improve the city. Okay. To move us into the future to create an environment where people want to invest, where young people want to live. Whether they stay here or they come back, either or I'm happy with. And, and I think that's what yours truly and council has been doing and hopefully will continue to do. No matter where I am, you and I can take a bus and drive anywhere in the city. You can take your car if you want to, okay? <laughs> you will see changes that have been impacted by the mayor and council getting things done. And of course, that's what it's all about and the private sector. And no matter where you go, I'll take you anywhere and I can show you, name any part of the city, you will see major improvements being done. Now, we still have to focus on our roads. There's no question about that. Lots of work to be done there. But as I say, council has come up with a plan and hopefully future councils will continue with that plan. And the question I wasn't going to ask you today, because I don't prepare questions really, it's more of a conversation, is, but I wouldn't ask you about your legacy, because I, is that, I don't, do you actually think that you're going to want to leave a legacy? I know the media talks about that a lot. Is that really something that you, you I'll would tell you how about? much I think about it. When I, when I got asked the question, you know what my answer was? My children, my family, that's my legacy. That's what it is to me. I mean, I, I don't know why they think politicians, I mean, I've never been the type of politician that needed to take credit for a project. I just wanted to get it done. Anybody could get the credit, just get it done. I didn't care. That's the way I've always been. I'm not, I'm not going to change who and what I am. It's really about you want to make the city a better place and you want to leave it better than what you found it, so to speak. I guess maybe it's not now the right word. You want to solve problems along solve the way problems. because there are problems, yeah. no question about it. That's been my attitude. But as I say, I mean, that's the one question the media keeps on asking over and over and over again. And I would say, you know what? Go spend an hour checking out the city. You'll see legacies everywhere if that's what you guys are looking for, but that's not the way it was for me. We'll be right back with uh, Mayor Sam Cates after we take this break. Welcome back to Food and Friends. My guest this morning is Mayor Sam Cates. So, Sam, I give you a lot of credit for, A, coming on the show. I mean, politicians and people are... Uh, I don't know, they are suspect, right? People, politicians only come on media because they're trying to get reelected. You're not trying to get reelected here. And you did me the favor of coming on and talking about it. And I know you're going to be doing tons of interviews over the next couple of months, I'm sure. And I really, really appreciate it. But the time that you've given to the city and to the province and to Canada is, is amazing. And it's something that it makes me proud that you've done this. And I, I consider us friends. Um, but you must be hugely proud of what you've accomplished and, and concerned about what's going to happen in the future. You know, um, I don't want to be concerned, but I, I must confess, you know, not a day goes by, you know, no matter where I am, whether I'm, I'm shopping for food or I'm at a public event, you know, I get people coming up to me, you know, you've got to run again. Why? You know, and I, I say, you know what? Go talk to my wife. OK, you may as well <laughs> talk to the boss right now. I said, you know, what, you guys, I've done 10 years. I want to spend some time with the family. But, you know, they they're a little, you know, some people are people concerned. Yes. But you know what? I have no doubt in my mind we've got several candidates out there right now who, who want to be the next mayor. 
And I'm sure each and every one of them is doing it for the right reason. And in the event, you know, just in the end, you know, democracy will prevail and whoever gets the most votes will be the next mayor and it'll be what it will be. The only difference from my point of view, see, what I always valued is I've never, ever been a member of any political party. Never have been, mm -hmm. never will be. And, and the reason is quite simple. I don't really totally get parties. I can put my faith in an individual and I can believe in an individual. I don't believe in this follow the party line. What if the party line is wrong? I'm not going to follow it. I'll follow a person to the bitter end. But, you know, so, but that's just me. I mean, everybody's different and so be it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I hope that, you know, the citizens of Winnipeg realize how important it is for them to come out and exercise their vote. You know, vote for the candidate of your choice. There certainly are lots of choices for council, for mayor. But it's important that you do get out there and vote. And a lot of people just, you know, they, they don't come out. I mean, it, turnouts at every level yep. have been pathetic. Yep. And, and that's why there's probably the debate whether voting should be compulsory or, you know, and, and, and there, there's, some, there's some good reasons for that. By the same token, we do live in a democracy. But I'm so ho hoping in the election that comes up, you know, in October that people do realize it's important to exercise your right to vote. It's, it's a right. It's a privilege. My parents certainly understood that. I understand that. And I, I certainly hope that people get out there and vote. Not all countries in the world, even today, have the right to vote and decide on their leaders. So we, we kind of take it for granted living in Canada. We live in a very good country. But the, the people saying that uh, they're turned off by politics, they don't vote to me, that's not an answer. It's, it's, it's you got to go. You got to be part of the process. Absolutely. Listen, there are people who are being murdered in certain countries for speaking up against governments. Mm hmm. I mean, can you fathom that? I mean, yeah. just think about that. And here we are in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, with all the rights and the privileges that we have because of the fact the veterans have fought for us to have what we have. And yeah, I think you should respect it and get out there and, and vote. I mean, you know, when, when, when immigrants are coming here and realizing what we have, they are so appreciative. And I think we should all be appreciative. And I know there's lots of things close to your heart. One is your, certainly your family, but also the goal is. Look at what a season they're having, eh? That's kind of my baby. They're having a great season. Playoffs. The playoffs. We'll see what's going to happen. But, you know, there's, there's nothing, nothing better in life than building something from scratch. It's the best thing in the world. And, 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 and there's a real good feeling at the end of it. So, yeah, I'm very happy with the gold eyes. I'm happy with the park. I'm happy with the fan support we've gotten. And like I say, you know, I'm very lucky that my parents picked Winnipeg. And, and Winnipeg's very lucky to have you and your family here because that ballpark, if we go back in history, wasn't the easiest thing to convince people to build, right? And, you know, a double-A team, if that's, a, if that's at the level you call it, you know, to bring to Winnipeg and making sure you have fan support and 40-some games a year, home games, is that right? Uh, 50 home games. 50 home games. So. I mean, listen, the yeah. reality, the ballpark was not supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to exist because at the time, the then mayor didn't want it. So it just goes to show if you believe in something, you never know what could happen. And won championships, won multiple awards uh, for the team and the general manager and it, and yourself and Hall of Fames. It goes on and on. But Man, yet, yeah, it's just, it goes. <laughs> Can you imagine me in the Hall of Fame? <laughs> I am. And, and yet this season had more wins than ever in franchise history, more road wins and playoffs. I mean. Yeah, 63, it's pretty, you know, it's, it's you know what, it's, it's wonderful. Life. Life is really good. Winnipeg's such a wonderful city. And uh, like I say, I, I appreciate everything that we all have here and everything we have the opportunity to, to participate in. The Bombers are having a phenomenal season right now. You know, I mean, things are, things are good. And hopefully, let's just keep that momentum. The important thing is I can, I, I can sit here in front of you and say that yours truly and council have given this city phenomenal momentum. Let's keep it going uh, absolutely so are you thinking of getting back into the rock and roll business i know you're a promoter at one time brought in uh, bon jovi and the rolling stones you think of going down that path now, uh, you, now no, that you have I, a little I, I more time you, i'll be going i'll be definitely doing work with the gold eyes yeah. no question about that um you know doing some trying to get more events at the ballpark and of mm. course you know, my wife has a couple projects. My wife has worked in the film industry, so she right. wants me to work on a couple projects with her. And then I want to make sure I have some time to spend with the family. I mean, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not pushing to do 
more. I just, you know, I want to do things that I enjoy and have fun, and that's what I exactly I intend to do. And, and it, it's not like you're, you know, dropping off the face of the earth here because you're not becoming mayor anymore. I know we're still going to see you around a lot, but I also think you're going to get involved in more because I'm not sure you can just sit at home and just do the gold eyes. You're going to be doing more All things, I bet. All you have to do is get on your show and say, here's what we need, and people say, can't be done. You might hear from me because I love doing what people say can't be done. And you've done it time and time again. And I intend to continue that. Till they say goodbye forever and I'm <laughs> gone, okay? We're talking to Mayor Sam Cates, and we'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to Food and Friends. Please join me next Saturday when my guest will be Terry, the general manager of Prairie Theatre Exchange. Terry will tell us about the upcoming PTE season starting next month. My guest today has been Sam Cates, the mayor of Winnipeg. You know, this this has been a lot of fun, and I've enjoyed talking about the last 10 years and, and the things you're going to be doing coming up, and there's lots on the go. But it really comes back to me what you talk about is family, family, family. That's always been number one. I've always said my number one priority, my family. That's never going to change. And just so people remember, all I'm doing is moving from 510 Main Street to one Portage Avenue, Winnipeg Gold Eyes Baseball Club. I will be here. I promise you that. We're still going to see you around. Oh, you, I guarantee. Will, will you it. get to more ball games now? You know what? I got to two ball games this year until the playoffs. That's how busy it was. But yeah, next season I'll be at a lot more ball games. So that seems odd that I got to as many ball games as you have. <laughs> 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 that that does seem odd. Well, you worship. Thank you very much for your dedication to our city over the last ten years. Uh, you make make us all proud, and you've done a lot. Thank you. Well, thank you, and I appreciate everything you've done and continue to do as well. So all the best. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being on Food and Friends. Thanks to Nicole Bonnycamp, our show's producer. Take care, and please, don't forget to eat your veggies. <laughs>